Honourable Senators, I rise to speak to Bill S-251, an act to repeal Section 43 of the Criminal Code. I want to begin my speech by recalling the words of Senator Kutcher when he spoke to this bill last October. He said, and I quote, I think every member of this chamber wishes that all violence against children would stop. I couldn't agree more. But of course, wishing it and achieving it are two different things. In the specific case of parents, I can't imagine any sane or responsible parent who would wish to inflict physical violence on their child. Legislation or no legislation, it almost goes against nature. And my sense is that those who have done so, maybe in a fit of peak or exhaustion, did not do so at least without feeling some huge measure of remorse. And those who don't, I don't think the repeal of Section 43 is going to stop them. I understand the appeal of this legislation, honorable senators, but I think for the most part, when it comes to parents, few need a bill or a section of the criminal code to stop them from beating or even laying a hand on their child. We have come a long way from the very long ago days when it was common to hear the phrase, spare the rod and spoil the child. All children in Canada are protected from all forms of violence through the criminal code, which contains general criminal offenses to protect all persons from violence and several offenses that specifically protect children. For example, the failure to provide the necessaries of life, child abandonment, and several child-specific sexual offenses. In addition to protections under the criminal code, every province and territory has laws to protect children from family, family violence and abuse. These laws allow the state to act where a child is in need of protection from physical, emotional, and psychological harm or neglect. Many provinces and territories also have laws and policies that prohibit the use of physical punishment of children in foster homes, childcare settings, such as daycares, as well as in schools. In BC, the Teachers Act, Section 38, states that a teacher is prohibited from engaging in A, physical harm to a student, B, sexual abuse or sexual exploitation of a student, C, significant emotional harm to a student. This bill and Section 43, which it seeks to repeal, goes beyond simply parents to include teachers or anyone else standing in the place of a parent. Specifically, Section 43 of the Criminal Code states that, quote, every school teacher, parent, or person standing in the place of a parent is justified in using force by way of correction toward a pupil or child, as the case may be, who is under his care if the force does not exceed what is reasonable under the circumstances. This bill, as Senator Kutcher and others have noted, is the latest rendition in a succession of bills attempting to address the issue of corporal punishment. Senator Kutcher mentioned that former Senator Hervieu Payette introduced the bill eight times before former Senator Sinclair took over the responsibility. And I believe Senator Kutcher mentioned other efforts going back to 1989. I think that amount of elapsed time between when the effort first began to the current bill we are dealing with today is a significant indication that this is not necessarily a straightforward issue. It is worth noting that as recently as 2004, the Supreme Court of Canada in the case of Canadian Foundation for Children, Youth and the Law versus Canada Attorney General upheld Section 43 saying the provision does not violate the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It does not, six of nine justices concluded, infringe a child's right to security of the person or their right to equality, nor does it constitute cruel and unusual treatment or punishment. In his conclusion, the court provided the following guidelines. One, parent caregivers can only use corrective force or physical punishment that is minor or transitory and trifling in nature. For example, spanking or slapping a child hard enough that it leaves a mark or bruise would not be considered transitory and trifling and would not be reasonable. Two, teachers cannot use force for physical punishment under any circumstances. 
teachers may be permitted to use reasonable force toward a child in appropriate circumstances, such as to remove a child from a classroom. Three, physical punishment cannot be used on children younger than two years old or older than 12 years old. Four, physical punishment cannot be used on a child in anger or in retaliation for something a child did. Five, objects such as belts or rulers must never be used on a child and a child must never be hit or slapped on the face or head. Six, any use of force on a child cannot be degrading, inhumane, or result in harm or the prospect of harm. Seven, physical punishment cannot be used on a child who is incapable of learning from the situation because of a disability or some other factor. Eight, the seriousness of the child's misbehavior is not relevant to, the, to deciding whether the force used was reasonable. The force used must be minor, no matter what the child did. The court ruled, the majority of the court, I should say, that the use of force must be sober and reasoned address actual behavior, and be intended to restrain, control, or express symbolic disapproval. It also must not be intended to harm or degrade the child. I don't think anything is served by couching this decision in inflammatory language, language such as, while it is no longer legal to assault wives or employees, as the, as the 1892 law allowed, it is still permissible in our criminal code to assault children. Let me be clear. Parents who go beyond the bounds outlined by the Supreme Court, those that abuse their children deserve to be punished. Raising children is a challenging endeavor filled with trial and error. Parents want what is best for their children. They want them to behave and be productive members of society, to understand the rules and nuance of getting along with others. Parenting is simply the act and attitude of unconditional love. Under those conditions, using corrective force that is minor in nature is a tool some parents will employ. I would suggest that all parents at one time or another consider spanking their children. Most don't, but punishing those parents that do and sending them to jail for this will do irreparably more harm for the family. As I mentioned earlier, Section 43 also goes beyond parents to teachers as well, and the court ruled on that also. While it ruled out corporal punishment as permissible in schools, it said teachers may use force to remove children from classrooms or to secure compliance with instructions. Honorable Senators, the unfortunate fact of our society today is that you are more likely to see students assaulting teachers rather than the other way around. Don't get me wrong, neither is something you want to see or some, neither is this something you want to see or something that should be allowed in schools. But the problem of violence in schools today is a general one, and in many ways, in certain influential and vocal segments of our society, the response to it is, to com is the complete reverse of what you might expect. Police, for instance, the usual ones you would call in response to a violent attack, are now considered to be the perpetrators of violence, sometimes by their mere presence. I'm thinking of an incident recently in an Ottawa school where a child on bringing your parent to school day was not allowed to bring his father wearing a police uniform. Police in general are often not welcome in the schools nor by school boards. Honourable Senators, as I said, we are dealing with a very complex issue. It is reflective of that that the court was split in 2004. Justice Ian Binney argued in his dissenting opinion that Section 43 defense should not be available to teachers. Justice Louise Arbers in hers argued that Section 43 was unconstitutionally vague, a violation of children's security and not in accordance with the principles of fundamental justice. Justice Marie Deschamps argued that Section 43 violates Section 15 of the Charter because it encourages a view of children as less worthy of protection and respect for their bodily integrity based on outdated notions of their inferior personhood. It was her view that a law that permits more than only very minor applications of force unjustifiably impairs the rights of children. So, honorable senators, while the majority ruled on the court as it is intended in our democracy, 
it would be an oversight in our debates here not to recognize that there were very different and strongly argued opinions as well. We have that here in the Senate, which we all, we, we all saw in the, which we saw in the exchange between Senator Kutcher and Senator Plett. As you will have guessed with, from my earlier remarks, while I respect the views of Senator Kutcher and all those who have spoken to this bill since, mostly in favor, I have concerns about, about the bill for reasons I have articulated. But nonetheless, I support this bill being referred to committee for further study and further debate. Thank you. Thank you.